Hey quilters, it's Patty Carey of Patty's Patchwork. Thanks for joining me in the For the Brave Quilt Along, celebrating the 10th anniversary of Northcott Stonehenge Stars and Stripes collection. We are finished our quilts, we're ready to quilt them and bind them. And I've got some great binding tips to share with you, as well as some suggestions on quilting. So let's get started. I custom quilted the All Blocks quilt in the background of most of the blocks, I stipple quilted and outlined the motifs. In the label blocks that had space, if there was space in them, I usually quilted a heart motif. Otherwise, I outlined the designs. In the blocks themselves, because I have pressed the seams toward the piecing and away from my background in most cases, I was able to stitch in the ditch and that really makes these elements pop. In the blocks themselves, if there was a larger piece, I did a little custom quilting in those sections, such as a grid work in the center of this piece. My sashing is built on a four patch unit because our blocks are divided into, they're based on a four patch. So I quilted an orange peel design that has four repeats in it and that keeps the pattern and symmetry of the pattern. In the border, this was a perfect quilt to do piano key straight line quilting. And so that's what I did there. On the label version, I opted for an all over design. In this one, I used a cream variegated color of King Tut thread called Sands of Time. I did a second version that used a variegated red, blue, and cream color called Freedom. And I quite like how this one turned out. Let's zoom in a little. Let's talk about binding. I've gathered all of my supplies. I have a very lightweight, this is a 60 weight thread that I'm going to use when I sew the binding onto the quilt. And then it's also going to go into the bobbin when I sew my binding down. I like to sew my binding on the back, then turn it to the front. When I'm stitching it on the front, I will again use my polyester monofilament thread and that makes it pretty much invisible. I've got my binding prepared. We've cut bias binding for this quilt using the striped fabric and just want to zoom in a little bit and show you what this binding looks like on the front of the quilt. So I'm going to zoom in here. So I've stitched, I've stitched my binding to the back and then I've turned it to the front and I've used that mock applique stitch to stitch it down except I've mirror imaged it because this time our stitch is going to be on the left side and it's going to nip into the binding to do our, our um, to attach the binding and I've lengthened it so that it's as long as I can get it which is a stitch length of about six and let's take a little look at the corners here and you can see on both parts so the other thing that I do if I'm putting a label on the quilt and I'll zoom back out there we go is I will tack the label into the corner before I put my binding on the first side so that that label is already attached on two of the sides. The other thing that I use when I'm sewing my binding on is my grippy gloves and I sell these on my website. These have rubber dots on both sides and I put the glove on this hand only and it really helps uh, me move the quilt 
the bulk of that quilt through the machine as I'm applying the binding to, to both sides, when I'm sewing the binding on the quilt and then when I'm turning it and stitching the other side down. But, uh, so I'm gonna demonstrate that now. I'm starting about 15 inches or so from one corner of my quilt and I'm going to leave a tail of binding about um, 8 to 10 inches. I've got my regular sewing uh, foot on. This is not my quarter inch foot, it's a little bit wider and I am, because our binding is two and a half inches, pressed in half, that's about an inch and a quarter. So I am going to sew that on with a 3 8 inch seam or uh, about one centimeter if your needle plate is in metric. And I've got a stitch length, yeah, a little bit longer, about three. And um, I think that's, that's about it. So I'm going to start sewing. Now what I do when I'm sewing my binding on, and this binding is biased, so it's a little bit stretchier than, than traditional binding, which is cut from with the fabric strips. But I pull the binding just a little bit as I'm attaching it. And that prevents borders, outer edges of the quilt that wave back at us. I'm keeping my binding aligned with the edge of my quilt. I'm gonna zoom in just a little bit. As we're getting close to the corner. And you can see my label. So I have pinned my label in place uh, and I'm going to stitch down the two edges. So I've turned under the edge on the inner edges of it, uh, pressed it under a quarter inch, and the rest of it is going to be captured in the seam allowance when I sew the binding. So I just pull it a little and stitch with that 3 8 inch seam. And I am going to, because I'm doing 3 8 of an inch, I am going to sew to within 3 8 of an inch of the corner. So I'm going to take a pin Just things just a little bit here. There we go. Putting a pin right where the quilt ends so that I can see that. And when I get to about three eighths from the corner, and I'll zoom in a little bit more. Go. I am going to, I've lifted the foot slightly and I'm going to pivot so that you can see the corner of the quilt is right there. So I want to pivot off and so my stitching line is at a 45 degree angle off the corner. So my binding goes back along that 45 degree line and then I fold it back down so that it's lined up exactly with that top edge of the quilt and also with the right edge of the quilt. And I put the foot back down right at the edge and I start sewing with a 3 8 inch seam again. And again, I'm gonna pull it just slightly. And I continue working my way around the quilt until I get close to the end 
that I started at, close to the, the um, where I started sewing the binding on. So I'm going to do the corner one more time. I'm getting close to my corner. So a little stretch. So not a lot, just a bit of a stretch. And a pin right where the corner is. So because our seam is 3 8 I'm going to stop 3 8 from the corner. And if you're not sure if that's right or not, just pivot this up just a little bit. Pivot and see if when you put your foot down, if it, uh, if you are, um, three eighths or more or less from the corner and I'm at about three eighths right now so I'm going to pivot back and I'm going to come right off towards the point. So I've got my 45 degree stitching line. I fold the binding back along that line and fold it back down so that the top folded edge is perfectly in line with the top edge of the quilt. And the right edge is exactly in line with the side seam. Start sewing right at the very edge, sewing my quarter inch of three eighths inch seam and we'll see you back here where the binding meets. I've trimmed the leading edge of my binding. This is where I started sewing. So I've trimmed the leading edge so that it is square and I've finished sewing the binding here. So I've left a gap of about 12 inches or 30 centimeters and I've marked with a pin when I take into account uh, a little bit of stretch. This, where the pin is, is just where it meets that leading edge, the cut edge. So how much extra do I allow? Because I need to uh, angle, I need to miter my binding join. So I'm going to take the end of my binding and I lay it across and I that's how much longer I cut the tail end of my binding don't cut your leading edge but you cut the tail end of your binding right across that seam there and that will give you enough space to turn to to give you your mitered angle so the other thing that I do is I'm going to fold, especially because my stripe is going this way, I'm going to fold right at the corner there and put a little crease in there. And that crease marks my sewing line. So now it's time to, to join our binding. So this one comes up and this one comes across. And the stripes are actually running in the same direction. So that should help. And I'm going to put a pin right here. And a pin right down as well. And I've got my little crease line there that I can see and I'm going to sew right along that crease line. Now if you're not quite sure if that's going to be right, you can kind of just check it before you sew it. So our sewing line 
goes from that tip to this tip. checking where it is it's right there and I'm just gonna back stitch to secure it And there you have it. So I will trim that seam, finger press it open, and like I've done with the rest of my binding uh, seams, and then I will finish stitching it down with a 3 8 inch seam. Once again, I've got my mock applique stitch that I'm going to use to sew my binding down to the front of my quilt. And I've got a stitch length of 1.5, uh, uh, pardon me, a width of 1.5 and a length of 6, which is as long as it goes. And more importantly, I don't want the stitch to look like this. I'm going to mirror image it so that the stitch is on the left and it nips into the binding on the right. So I'm sewing my binding on the second side. Um, in my case, uh, it's sewing on the right side and I pulled my binding so that it is just covering my stitching line. And I've got my uh, the same foot on, a regular foot, and my stitch, my mock applique stitch, is stitching on the quilt and just nipping into the binding. Now, when I'm about, and I'll zoom out a little bit here. When I'm about uh, five or six inches from the corner, I'm going to prepare the corner so that I can turn it. And I want to turn the bottom edge up first. So finger press that in place. And what I'm looking for when I do that if this binding is all the way out, I'll get a nice, crisp, uh, 45 degree angle on the corner of my binding. So, and then I can pull it, put my fingernail in there and pull the binding. And I've got a little mini wonder clip that can hold that in place until I get to the corner. So just getting there. And I'll zoom in again so we can get a better look. stitch down the second side and I just continue on just covering my stitching line working my way around the quilt doing all four corners like that and then we'll be done my two For the Brave quilts are quilted and bound and ready to hand over to Quilts of Valor to donate to some deserving service personnel 
Now it's your turn. Finish your quilts, snap a photo, then head on over to Northcott's Instagram page to enter the final month, month 10 giveaway for your chance at some fabulous prizes. It's been a real pleasure to have you quilting along with me these past 10 months. I hope you've enjoyed it as much as I have. I would appreciate if you would take a moment to let me know what your favorite block is and if you learned something during the quilt along, what your favorite tip was. Please pop me an email, patty.pattyspatchwork at gmail.com and let me know your thoughts. Thank you so much and we'll see you back here soon.